All right, come and take a look at this email. It's one I received a couple of years ago, but about something pretty important. Hi, Vanessa, this is a start, dot, dot, dot. We should meet together in person to talk. Now, I want you to rate this. Would you say it's positive, negative, or neutral? Pop your answers down in the comments and we'll revisit them shortly. Every single day, 306 billion emails are sent and received worldwide, which is a lot of data, full inboxes, and fingers typing in every corner of the globe. So why are people so bad at writing emails? And why are we occasionally kind of bad at interpreting them and reading them as well? Thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. More about them later. Now, back in 1990, a Stanford PhD student named Elizabeth Newton designed a simple study called the TAP test. In this study, people were assigned one of two roles, either tapper or listener. The tapper tapped down a rhythm on a table and the listener's job was to guess the song. Let's try it. I'll tap, you listen. Do you know the song? In the experiment, the tapper predicted the listener would guess the song correctly 50% of the time. They tapped out 120 songs, so they thought the listeners would guess about 60 of them correctly. But the listeners only guessed three of the songs correctly, which is a success rate of two and a half percent. When you tap out a song, you can't avoid hearing that song being played in your head. Once you know, you can't unknow. But to the listener, what they hear is like a bizarre Morse code. This is called the curse of knowledge or knowledge bias, a cognitive bias that happens when a person communicating with other people incorrectly assumes that others have the background to understand. And knowledge bias plays out in all kinds of fun ways on YouTube. Can you guess this song? It helps if you have the title for the song. This one's my personal favourite. Once you have the information, you can't imagine what it was like not having the information. Assuming that other people know what we know is one of the biggest mistakes that we all make in communication. We think we're being super clear, even though we're not. Scientists think this has to do with something called egocentrism, which is basically the inability to see something from someone else's point of view. When you're sending an email, you have all of the information and the context in your head, but to the other person, it can come across like a series of disconnected taps. If you've ever been confused by an email, the good news is that you're not alone because I get confused and irrationally mad at emails all the time. Remember this example from the start of the episode? Did you rate it as negative, positive, or neutral? So this response was about a big project that I was working on after I sent what I thought was pretty good work. I received this back and I read it as negative. It really caused me to spiral and I thought I was gonna lose the job. But it turns out this email was positive. The person just wanted to meet with me to make a few tweaks to my work and brainstorm for a later stage of the project. They could have been more specific about it, but a lot was actually lost in translation with my interpretation. And this is because we approach email with a negativity bias. Psychologist Daniel Goleman has written that if a sender feels positive about an email, the receiver usually just feels neutral. And if the sender feels neutral about the message, then the receiver typically feels negative about it. This suggests that every message you send gets bumped down a few points in positivity when someone else reads it. But there's actually not a ton of published research on negativity bias in digital communication styles. So I wanted to test out your perception of punctuation to see if you have a negativity bias towards certain things. The full stop has been singled out as hostile and research has found that text messages ending in a full stop are less sincere. Research, I will add, that included a scientific figure that was an image of a Blackberry. So I did a survey on Instagram to try to replicate the BlackBerry figure study. 
But in the questions that I used from that study, most people rated the full stop as neutral rather than less or more sincere. Sadly for me and how I've used my time over the past week, an Instagram survey is not a real scientific study. So if this was administered a bit differently or a bit more systematically, the results could obviously look different too. A lot of you had thoughts about the Instagram poll feature and even Physics Girl and Veritasium pointed out that it was frustrating. The jury was also out on the full stop being negative, but the majority of people rated the dreaded ellipsis as negative. In the open comments, some people did have a negative bias towards both the full stop and the ellipsis, describing them as passive aggressive, skeptical, ominous, and very, very bad. Which somewhat explains the rise in exclamation points to make your emails more positive, but not unhinged or unprofessional, just friendly and enthusiastic. Though this email exclamation point trend on TikTok isn't surprising, your age is actually related to how punctuation influences your perception of messages. A 2018 study looked at differences in how people born before 1985 interpret messages compared to those born in 1985 or later. Participants read an exchange where some of the replies contained full stops, while others had the same text but no full stops. Just take a final moment to rate these two messages. Is one more positive? Is one more negative? Or are they about the same? The study participants rated the replies on how positive or negative they thought they were. And for those born before 1985, it didn't seem to matter whether the reply had a full stop or not. Younger people, on the other hand, rated messages with full stops as more negative than those without. For sure this is subtle, but it's still really important for school or workplace dynamics if younger people are interpreting messages from their professors or colleagues or bosses as more negative than they were intended. Now it's easy to be critical of all of the confusing messages that you receive, but the truth is, I'm just going to say it, we're all a little bit bad at communicating. People vastly overestimate their ability to get a message across clearly when they're sending an email. And this isn't an easy problem to fix. We do so much emailing and communicating every single day and it's exhausting to do everything with intention. But what you can do is be aware of things like the curse of knowledge, negativity bias, and even generational punctuation. Just keeping them in mind can help nudge our communication in a clearer direction. Now, if you would like to try an experiment yourself, except maybe sending experimental emails to your colleagues and friends is not a good idea, then you could try a box from KiwiCo, who are the sponsors of this video. KiwiCo creates super cool hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to science, tech, engineering, art, and maths. Even though this is meant to be for kids, I had a lot of fun building it, and they do say their projects are for ages 0 to 104, so I think I'm all good. They have monthly crates with eight subscription lines, each for different age groups and topics. Each box comes with all the supplies you need, and honestly, they make a great gift because they teach kids how to create and innovate early so they'll crush it when they're older. Also, I never now have some new desk bling to bring me peace while I am sending emails. Please head to kiwico.com forward slash braincraft to get 50% off your first month of any crate. Thanks.